Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here doing our final video on Power Series applications of Power Series. We're just going to show you a few, there are many applications of Power Series, but some common ones you might see in a calculus course. We're going to talk to you about approximating a value using Power Series, substitution to get other series that you might want, get them more easily using known series, and then approximating a definite integral that may be very difficult for you to calculate by hand, and we'll use a Power Series to approximate that a little more easily. We're going to go ahead and use Maclaurin series in this video. They're easier to derive than Taylor series in general most of the time. And also these are three common ones that we can just haul out from our Maclaurin series video that we already did in the past. And you probably have already seen these if you've watched our videos or worked with these on your own. So we're going to be using these series for sine, cosine, and e to the x to do some of our applications here in this video. So if you need to take a quick mental snapshot of these, go ahead and do that right now. So first we're just going to approximate a value. Here we're going to use the first four non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series to approximate cosine of 1. So I want to, if I'm going to approximate cosine of 1, I want to use the Maclaurin series for cosine. So remember that's an alternating series that is only even powers. So the series or the polynomials for cosine are even polynomials. So if I want to evaluate cosine of 1, get approximation for that, we'll say cosine of 1 is going to be approximately equal to, plugging 1 in for x in our series, we'll get 1 minus 1 squared over 2 factorial plus 1 to the 4 over 4 factorial minus 1 to the 6 over 6 factorial. Well, we can clean that up. Certainly, all these powers of 1 are just going to be 1. So we get 1 minus a half plus 1 over 4 factorial. We'll go ahead and write out what that is. That's 24 minus 1 over 6 factorial. We'll go ahead and write that out as well. That's 720. We don't expect you to know that. So if we add all these together, we should get a nice approximation for cosine of 1. And the value we get for this is 389 over 720. Or if we want a decimal approximation for that, we get about 0 0.5402, and then we get 7 repeating. And if we plug cosine of 1 into a scientific calculator, it will give us a decimal approximation of cosine of 1 to be about 0.5403. 0, 2, 3. So you, you can see we are pretty close. We are good to about the fourth decimal place. I guess if we rounded here, well, then we would be to four places pretty nicely. So that's a good way to approximate cosine of 1, not knowing what that is, but just knowing the Maclaurin series for it, we could plug in and approximate cosine of 1. Now, one thing, Maclaurin series our approximations around zero, and the value that we're plugging into cosine is somewhat close to zero. So that's why we're getting a pretty decent approximation. If we tried to approximate cosine of a much larger number that's far away from zero, then we probably won't get a good approximation unless we take many, many, many terms using a Maclaurin series. So just be careful with that. If you're using Maclaurin, make sure you're approximating a value around zero. Let's look at another one. Say we want to evaluate sine of 2 and approximate that. We'll use the first four non-zero terms for that one. So just remember that sine is the odd polynomial. It is alternating. We get x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial, etc. So the first four non-zero terms would just be out to the x to the 7 term. So if I want to approximate sine of 2, now 2 is a bit further out from 0, but we're going to go ahead and try using Maclaurin on this. Sine of 2, we are going to go ahead and say is approximately 2 minus 2 cubed over 3 factorial plus 2 to the 5 over 5 factorial minus 2 to the 7 over 7 factorial. We'll do a bit of writing this out. I'll not reduce. We'll go ahead and plug this into a calculator anyway. So 2 minus, we would get 2 cubed is 8. 3 factorial is 6. That would be 4 thirds, but we'll just leave that. 2 to the 5th is 32. 5 factorial will give us 120. 2 to the 7 is going to give us 128. And then 7 factorial will give us 5,040. And so our approximation here ends up being in reduced form 286 over 315. And a decimal for that, we would get about 
nine, three, six, five. So that is what we get when we just try to approximate by plugging in two to the Maclaurin series. If we ask a scientific calculator, then it will tell us a decimal approximation of 0.909297-ish. So you can see we are still accurate to at least a couple of decimal places. Not quite as accurate on this one because again, the value that we're approximating uh, is a little bit farther from zero than the last one when we did and we're using Maclaurin which is centered at zero as an approximation. So here's our Maclaurin series for e to the x, one plus x plus x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial, etc. The square root of e, if we wanna think of it in terms of e to the x, that's the same as e to the one half power. So we'll be cutting it off after the x cubed term. That's the fourth non-zero term here. So we'll get one plus one half plus, we'll get one half squared over two factorial. Then we'll get one half cubed over three factorial. So if we sort of rewrite this, we'll get one plus a half. One half squared would be a fourth, divided by another two would be an eighth. This one half cubed would be one over eight. Three factorial is six, so one over eight divided by six will get one over 48. And we actually get that this sums up to five thirds. So our decimal approximation of this is actually going to be 1.6 repeating, right? 1.666, I guess if you round at some point it would become a seven. And if we ask a scientific calculator what the square root of E is, then we will get a decimal from it of 1.648721. One about. So the square root of e, that's our approximation just using out to the x cubed term, which is a pretty short one. You'll see that even if you just use five or six terms, you get a very, very nice approximation for a lot of these. So let's say we want to use the substitution to write a Maclaurin series for e to the 3x. This is really nice because in order to write a series for e to the 3x, I would have to find all its derivatives and I would have to plug in zero into each of those derivatives. And that may not be too bad, but I already have e to the x. So a Maclaurin series for e to the three x will just simply be the same series, but wherever x is, then we just need to substitute in three x, right? Instead of x for an exponent in the function, we have three x. So it'd be one plus three x plus three x squared over two factorial plus all of 3x cubed over 3 factorial plus all of 3x the 4 over 4 factorial, etc. right? Okay, so we could, so first of all, we could write this in sigma notation, right? So we could see uh, we have powers of 3x, they're going up by one. I start at the zero power of 3x. So we could say, well, we start from zero and go forever more, and we get three x on the top. So that's three x to the power n. And then on the bottom, we just have factorials, zero factorial, one factorial, two factorial, etc. So this is just going to be n factorial. So this is our sigma notation representation for the entire infinite series there. Let's write a substitution now for sine of x squared. This is one that we would do, especially when we're trying to integrate. So we should know by now that the Maclaurin series for sine of x is the alternating odd polynomial here. So if we go ahead and just replace x with x squared, sine of x squared, its Maclaurin series will be x squared minus x squared cubed over three factorial plus x squared to the five over five factorial, we'll do one more, minus x squared to the seven over seven factorial, etc. So if we clean this up a bit, then we'll say the Maclaurin series for sine of x squared. Chain rule becomes kind of a pain as you keep having to do this over and over. You get some product rules and it becomes not so nice and then you gotta go back and plug in. Uh, so we get minus x to the six here, product there in the exponent, plus x to the 10, x squared to the five is x to the 10 over five factorial, minus x to the 14. So you can see a nice increasing pattern 
in our powers of x. Notice we're going up by x to the 4 each time. Uh, do notice though that the factorials do not match the power, right? Because we, you know, we had a cube here and we had a 3, but then we did some multiplication of exponents there, etc. Uh, if we wanted to write this in sigma notation, we want to look at the powers of x, the pattern for that, and then the factorials separately, right? So if we start at n equal to 0, then think about we have 1, 3, 5, 7, right? So those are odd numbers, and I want an odd number that's one more than my starting. So I want my factorial to be, I want it to go up by 2, but I want it to start one more than n equals 0. I want it to start at 1 factorial, so 2n plus 1. So we're going up by 2 and we're starting at 1. If you look at the powers of x, I start at 2 and I want to go up by 4 each time. So my powers of x, I want to go up by 4, so that would be 4n, and I want to start at 2, so I would need to add 2 for my starting value. Now it is an alternating series as well, so we want to go ahead and say something like negative 1 to the n in the numerator as well. For our last little bit in this video, we just want to walk you through approximating a definite integral with a Maclaurin series substitution. So here I have the integral from 0 to 1 of cosine of x squared dx. This is a really good problem to do um, to show you what happens. If you try to evaluate this integral by hand, you will find that there's no way to evaluate this integral by hand using elementary functions. If you try to do this by a definition or u substitution or by parts or any of the methods that you've probably learned uh, in your calculus classes so far, there's no way to actually compute this by hand using functions that you likely know. So what we need to do then is replace it with its power series, with its Maclaurin series in this case, since my integral is close to values of zero, and then we'll evaluate the integral of its Maclaurin series instead. So remember now, cosine of x is this. So the first thing I'll need to do is figure out what is a Maclaurin series for cosine of x squared, right? So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll just, like we did for the sine of x squared, we'll replace all of our x's in the cosine Maclaurin series with x squared. So we'll get 1 minus, I'm going to go ahead and do this without the intermediate step, x squared squared would be x to the 4 over 2 factorial plus, and then x squared to the 4, I'd multiply those exponents, I would get x to the 8 over 4 factorial. And then if I do one more x squared to the 6, multiplying those exponents, I would get x to the 12 over 6 factorial, and the pattern would continue. So instead of doing the definite integral from 0 to 1 of cosine x squared dx, we're going to go ahead and do the integral of this from 0 to 1. So we'll be doing the integral from 0 to 1 of what we've written down. Now why this is nicer to do, why do this extra work? First of all, I can't evaluate that integral by hand, we already said. But second of all, um, aren't these all just power rules? If I put in a power series for something, a Maclaurin series, I'm really just evaluating and taking antiderivatives with powers, right? And that's really easy to plug into and take antiderivatives, so it shouldn't really be a problem. Everything is a power rule, so that's really nice. So let's go ahead and do the integral part of this, and then we'll plug in our bounds. So if I integrate, that will give me, integrating the first term here would just give me x minus, integrating this next term, the power would go up by 1, so I'd get x to the 5, and then I would divide by the new power. Now I already have 2 factorial in the bottom, so I'm going to get 5 times the 2 factorial that I already have down below. So plus the next one, x to the 8, the power goes up by 1, we get x to the 9. I'll divide by the 9, I already have a 4 factorial, so we'll get 9 times 4 factorial in the bottom. And then we'll do one more, so minus x to the 12 becomes x to the 13. You can still see a nice even distribution of powers here, right? Okay, we'll divide by 13, we already have a 6 factorial in the denominator, so we get times 6 factorial. Uh, we could go out as far as we want, so if we want a super accurate representation, we could always just keep taking more terms. But we'll go ahead and just do these four terms. Another nice reason to approximate 
definite integrals right around zero with Maclaurin series as well. Think about what's going to happen when I plug in zero. I'm going to get zero for all of these terms that have x, right? Super easy to evaluate. If I plug in one, super easy to evaluate as well. So if I plug in one, I will get one minus all of these powers of one are just going to be one. So this will be one over five times two factorial plus one over nine times four factorial minus 1 over 13 times 6 factorial. Okay, minus, again, like we said, if you plug in 0 for x everywhere, you're just going to get a bunch of zeros for all those terms. So our approximation here ends up being 1 minus, this is 1 over 5 times 2, so that's 1 over 10, plus 1 over 9 times 4 factorial. 4 factorial is 24. 9 times 24 is going to give us 216 minus, this one's a doozy, uh, 6 factorial is actually 720, and 13 times 720 is going to give us 9360. And if we write down a decimal approximation for these four terms added together, we'll get a 0 0.9045. And if we were to ask some sort of machine intelligence to approximate this numerically for us, it would tell us that we get an approximation of 0.904524-ish. So we're good for at least five decimal places on this. We approximated an integral that we don't even know how to do the integral by hand. Um, just by using substitution of series and then integrating and then evaluating our bounds in this series, which is just a bunch of power rules, gets us really, really close to the answer. Okay, hopefully this gives you an idea of some of the ways that you can use power series to assist you in your mathematics. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next videos.